Okay, so this is probably our very first trip out since the lockdown start, the last lockdown started in December. So it's been several months now. So this is the first week of like lockdown restrictions being slightly lifted so that um, self-contained accommodation is now allowed. We're looking forward to getting out of the city and then seeing a bit of countryside. All right, Benjamin? Bye -bye. Meow -meow. So here it's showing that we're going to be traveling 81 miles when 1 hour 53. That's our first kind of rest stop. Not actually going to be charging, but we're going to be stopping at some kind of large supermarket in Andover, most likely. And um, we have 180 miles according to the gong, so I think we should get there quite comfortably. So we've done 82 miles and we're on 63%. I've kept the car on eco mode the whole time with the Curse 2. Um, 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour is pretty good. 2.2 hours journey. So yeah, it took a bit of time getting out that London traffic. But uh, yeah, we have arrived at the Andover Tesco Superstore and we're just gonna have a little rest stop here and buy some food for the accommodation. So yeah, we um, should have plenty to get to the next stop. So um, I'm not gonna charge here. It's a little bit risky because the um, battle route planner was saying that I needed to charge somewhere for seven minutes to just to top up to get enough range. But the zap map was telling me that we have enough range to do this last leg of the journey. So we're just gonna risk it. How much am I? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have 59 miles to go, one and a half hours. Got 119 miles on the GOM, so we should definitely have enough um, battery to get us there. So let's go. Okay, so we finally arrived in Somerset, so 58.8 miles and 1.5 hours at 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. And we have arrived with 77 miles left on the GOM, 33% charge left. So the actual estimate from a better journey planner was completely wrong. We didn't actually need to charge. The MG5 has got plenty of range and we still have 77 miles according to the GOM. So the property we're staying on is this one here. It's like a little tiny cottage. It's kind of like a chalet if you go to Centre Parks or something. We've got one here, which is called the Pear Lodge, and there's one here, which is called the Apple Lodge. And we're basically the only two people next to the, the owners who are in this farm over here. And um, they have a little chicken coop here and some donkeys in this field. kind of a gorgeous day now sunset in Pear Lodge and uh, what I've decided to do is to park the car a little bit closer to the lodge and I'm running this uh, three pin granny cable over the grass here and I've got it plugged into the charge port of the MG5 and um, we're just going to do a bit of charging overnight and see how this goes so we had a little afternoon drive and we're on 30% at the moment, so it's 67 miles of range, single charging time of 17 hours. That's a very familiar sign. Uh, I'm sure that it'll actually be a lot faster than this, but uh, we'll check in in the morning. It's um, nearly eight o'clock now. So it is the next morning and we are still charging from our little window access there. And um, as you can see, it's 8.32 a.m. and we have charged up to 81% on this meter and it's saying we have 162 miles on this charge we don't actually need to charge it to 100 of course we only need it for our little day trips today we're going to get some supplies this morning so we don't want to leave it to the last day to have very little charge so it's a good idea to abc always be charging so that on the last day we just have to kind of do a top up rather than have to charge the whole thing because we kind of need most of that battery to get all the way home Okay. 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 Okay.
done our little trips today we've done a trip to the supermarket we've done a trip to the center of wells to see the market and we've also done our trip to Ebbe gorge and we're on 65 percent charge so i've decided to charge up once more and make sure that we are topped up as much as possible because um tomorrow we might decide to go home early back to london so it's always good to be charging. This type of holiday is only really possible with a car. You can't really get here on public transport. Today we've been in and out three times out of this accommodation and um, you know without this car we wouldn't be able to basically do anything. It's good to know that this electric car is capable of doing everything a petrol car can and albeit we are relying on this you know granny lead charger to charge the car and top it up every now and then. It's uh it's good if we have this option. I mean if I didn't then I would go into town and uh, use the supermarket fast chargers but um, it's good that I could actually keep topped up here and um, you know I'm paying for it as part of the accommodation. <laughs> past 10 and we're 100% charged, charged overnight just fine. We're gonna head our way to Cheddar Board. the car park's full you can actually find plenty of places like this where people have just parked their cars kind of on the bank of the road and if it's a Sunday like today it's pretty packed and people are quite crazy with uh, getting their cars. Okay climbing up Cheddar Gorge. Yeah? Nope. That, uh, that was the easy route. So Felicity's doing very well climbing up this part of the gorge. It is not an easy route for a four-year-old. What's that lunch? And she needs such more. What are you eating? Mm. Corn picnic eggs. Okay, that was a pretty good walk. Yeah, Do you like that walk? So I've um, left it charging overnight, ready for our trip home. Um, we've got 100% and 205 miles on the GOM. It is very condensation-y here. It hasn't rained overnight or anything, but um, it has got a lot of condensation. So I can see um, it's a little bit dewy here. This is pretty typical of a, kind of spring morning. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't doing any actual damage. I mean, I'm sure that this particular part, the, uh, the actual part that connects to the car is designed to be used outdoors and maybe even get rained on. But um, I have this on the grass, which I hope will be fine. Um, this particular extension lead is designed to be used outdoors, but I'm, I'm not sure it's supposed to get water inside it, but I'm sure we'll be fine. 
So anyway, um, it's been quite a good trip this uh, this particular holiday. It's the kind of first break that we've had for a really long time. And um, it's good to know that we don't have to rely on having like a big 4x4 or a petrol or diesel car in order to navigate these kind of country lanes. And you know, this kind of holiday is only really possible with a car. You can't really get here by public transport. You can't really do anything with that without an actual car. And um, it's good to know that the MG5 is perfectly suited for this kind of trip. And uh, we're very lucky that this particular accommodation has the ability to run this uh, power charger whenever we wanted to. And I didn't have to like trek into town every time we needed to top up. And um, you know, right now we're fully charged and we're gonna do this 112 mile trip home. And um, we don't actually have to stop to charge. It is like a three hour or so drive. A lot of that's gonna be going through London. Um, which is quite congested, especially as we're going back on a Monday morning. But, um, you know, overall it's been pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to make our way on this 112 mile trip into London. Let's go. Somehow we have managed to completely fill up this car's boot. But as long as it closes, we are okay. How do you count Stonehenge? So anyway, you can see now we're back in London and we've done our 112 plus journey. We did a little bit of a detour at a rest stop, but um, we're down back to 33%. So very comfortably back in range. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. And uh, if you want me to do any more videos about MG5 ownership, please let me know in the comments. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.